Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills, this is Logan Burgess. Today is Wednesday the 16th, and we had the markets move a little bit higher here this afternoon. Corn traded up two and three quarter cents. Beans up, really the leader to the upside, trading 25 and a half cents higher. Wheat in Chicago up three and a half cents, and Kansas City wheat up six and a half. You know, that spread between wheat uh, in Chicago and wheat in Kansas City, I think that really uh, kind of shows one of the reasons why we did see the market move higher. Uh, continue dryness forecast for the domestic right. winter wheat areas and that is putting a bid under the wheat market. I think that kind of spills over into corn as well. One of the other stories here uh, today for beans in particular is Argentina. You know they have had uh, dry weather uh, in the western and southern parts and it looks as though in the next 10 days they're going to continue to get that dryness. Now that's not very good story uh, that does kind of put a bid under the the bean market yep. and should kind of help out corn as well. Uh, they had a very wet planting season and once it starts to dry down, if we don't get that moisture, the root development really won't be there to be able to suck that subsoil moisture up. Uh, and so that's going to be a problem here going forward. Yeah. One interesting thing is uh, for corn, you know, we traded up, uh, we, we trade, last trade was around 733 and a quarter. We traded up two uh, and three quarter cents today, but we had very disappointing ethanol numbers. Can you kind of explain to us uh, what the, the EIA released? Yeah, Cody, well, we did get those EIA ethanol production numbers out today. Very disappointing report here for today for, uh, for the corn bowls out there, I guess. We had a significant pullback in production week over week. And uh, this is actually the smallest production number that we've seen since about June 2010 there. So if we take a look here at our model that we've been tracking throughout the first 19 weeks of the marketing year, the green line here is what we're expecting uh, as far as ethanol production here at Grain Hedge. The red bars are the weekly production uh, in thousands of barrels per day. And the blue line here is what we saw last year. So the big difference right now in, in why we're seeing such short production is the margins that these ethanol facilities are facing right now. Normally, uh, or on average, I guess right now, ethanol plants are seeing about 96 cents per bushel as their crush margin. This compares to about $1.90 last year at the same time. So the bottom line right now, the USDA is looking for about 4.5 billion bushels of corn to be used uh, in the production of ethanol here in the current marketing year. Here at Grain Hedge, given the current margins and, and with uh, our expectations for these margins to continue to remain very tight, we're looking for about 4.4 billion bushels to go to uh, ethanol production. That would be an 100 million bushel revision uh, on the ending stocks number or I guess uh, on the ethanol use number, which then obviously plays into ending stocks, but we didn't see the USDA revise that in their January report. I think that's something to keep an eye on here uh, in the coming months. So that's kind of interesting, you know, based on our model here, uh, it really does look like we're just not going to be using enough ethanol to meet the USDA's expectations, yet they didn't revise the number. Right. Do you think that if they did revise the number, uh, that could have changed the whole meaning of this report? And, and, uh, and kind of considering the fact that uh, this week was very disappointing uh, and right. it's not looking good in terms of the margins for ethanol, do you think that that could play in as a, a little bit of a, of a bearish story later on? Uh, you know, I think that could come down the line. I think, though, the bottom line right now is that people are looking at, you know, Friday's report, five, 45 million bushels taken off ending stocks for corn. We saw a huge revision to feed, 300 million bushels there. So, you know, we can look back at it and say a revision lower for ethanol would have changed things. But, you know, the bottom line is we got to take the numbers we're working with now. I think 602 million bushels uh, of projected ending stocks for corn is going to continue to support that market. But certainly where the margins are right now for ethanol, that's a story that we need to keep uh, kind of in the back of our minds. And, and we'll be keeping you posted on that here uh, on Green TV. So I I guess the question that I have is, uh, uh, based on where we are, you know, yesterday I was kind of expecting yeah. that we'd be able to see a little bit of a pullback here in the grains, yet we didn't see that. You know, it's not like we rocketed higher. Beans did, but uh, but the rest of the grain complex, it didn't really have a sharp move higher. Right. Um, where do we go from here? Do you think that that uh, pullback is still in the cards? You know, I, I think a little bit. If we looked at just kind of the, the movement of money throughout this week, we've seen the funds be huge buyers uh, in corn, soybeans, and wheat. Uh, just looking at soybeans, they've added about 18,000 contracts. Uh, to their net long position. That's, that's an estimated total, but from what we've been hearing, around 18,000 contracts. So certainly, I, I think there is some credence to kind of what you were talking about. There are concerns out of th South America. It's clear that the funds have bought into this, but um, this is quite a big move coming out of a USDA report on Friday where we saw ending stocks actually raised by 5 million bushels. So I, I think I'd be a little bit worried about beans here. Uh, we know that the, the crop down in Brazil is still looking very good. I'm looking for a little bit of a pullback, or at least a pause here 
Um, Cody, I know technically we were talking about this earlier. Can you kind of break down what, what technically this March soybean contract's looking like? Well, I think, you know, if you take a look at the, uh, the soybean contract right now, we're getting a whole lot closer to this 200-day moving average, right. which is sitting right about 1450. So I think there's a very good chance that tomorrow uh, we go up, we test that, we, you know, we close at the highs today. Right. I think there's a good chance we get up there, we test it, we'll find stronger resistance than we did uh, right around that 1445 uh, area right. uh, that we were looking at earlier. So I think that's a, a resistance level. And if you switch over here to corn, you know, we, we hit our head a couple times on that 734 level. Right. We, and, and we actually sold off pretty sharply during the middle of the day. We were actually negative on the day for a short period of time. And then, uh, and then right near the close, we saw a lot of buying coming into the market. Right. I think that corn and uh, and soybeans and wheat even, it's awfully close to $8, are very close to resistance levels. And I think one of these days, I you know, I, <laughs> I guess it's hard yeah. to predict the exact day, right. but I think that we will have to see uh, some profits get taken off the table. Right. You know, I, I don't necessarily think this is going to, you know, it, it would kill the bull market. Yeah. I think it's going to be a day of, uh, of uh, kind of a, a retracement right. uh, and some consolidation before we move higher here. But right. I would expect that in the next day or two. Okay. Well, one thing that the trade is going to be watching closely is uh, the USDA export sales report coming out tomorrow. Taking a look at expectations for that. Uh, corn expected to have another pretty darn light week here in terms of export sales. 150 to 250,000 metric tons expected there for corn. On beans, uh, the market's ex expecting the story to continue here. 750 to 950,000 metric tons of beans That's expected huge. to be reported for tomorrow. So we're going to have to take a look at that. We'll be tweeting about that report when it comes out at Grain TV is where you can find us over there. And we'll be, uh, we'll be filming Grain TV tomorrow afternoon kind of break down all the details of that report but you know cody i think it uh, kind of wraps up the action that we saw today for a wednesday here thanks a lot for joining us guys have a great evening we'll see you tomorrow